Uh, greetings to everyone in attendance. Uh, my name is um, John Efio, a structural engineer and a researcher at Covenant University. Uh, it's an honor to present this paper on the title Sustainable Construction and Cases of High-Rise Building Collapse in Nigeria. Let me use this opportunity to appreciate um, the effort of all co-authors, Professor Anthony Ede, Mr. Adeni, Dr. Paul Awera, Dr. Yebc, Dr. Mark, the engineer Zenkwa, you know, who are all present, you know, for bringing this paper to light, you know, with the aim of addressing a pressing issue that surrounds Nigeria and other developing countries. First, we must understand the concepts of um, sustainable construction. It can be defined as an act of creating. You know, and building or managing a healthy built environment by efficient utilization of um, eco-friendly practices and resources. Um, this concept has gained um, importance you know, in the construction industry over the past um, decades. And um, the quest to mitigate um, the deteriorating effects of human activities on the environment is what has brought about um, the concept of sustainability and the construction sector today has been demonstrated to have um, some negative impacts you know attributed to waste generation high energy usage depletion of energy and water and, and the release of co2 and other harmful gases you know which have um, posed um, several challenges to the environment you know, according to the united nations environment program the construction sector amounts for the release of um, around one third of um, global greenhouse gases, which is a major concern. So with this major concern in view, are we going to say buildings can no longer be constructed? Um, this is almost impossible to, to, to say, you know, owing to the high rise in population you know, and the excessive demand for these buildings and various other infrastructures. You know, and this has led to the increased adoption of high rise buildings today, you know, coupled with its other benefits. You know, however, um, daunting events such as the rise in collapse of multi-story buildings in various developing nations like Nigeria has been seen as a concern you know, in the pursuit of resilience and sustainable high-rise building constructions today. You know, Nigeria has reported over 170 um, building collapses you know, since the year 1971, with over 1,500 deaths. This is really um, a major concern. It's truly worrisome, despite the um, technological advancements we have today. You know, and this paper aims to explore the cases of collapse of high-rise buildings in Nigeria and seek a relationship with sustainable construction practices. But first we must understand what high-rise buildings are because this definition varies from region to region and um, based on the Lagos State Urban and Regional Planning Development Law, high-rise buildings are considered to be buildings with over five stories, you know, including the ground floor. You know, all buildings that are over 12 meters in height from the ground. So for this study, high-rise buildings are assumed to be five-story and above. And the scope of this study was limited to the last decade so as to work um, with the most uh, recent data available and also ensure that this study falls within current um, trend. And basic parameters such as number of floors, frequency of each group of floors, up to monthly record of collapse, um, confirmed causes of building collapse and striking differences between um, the collapse of high-rise buildings and others, you know, were considered you know, for this um, study. So from the results of this study, um, 66 cases of building collapses have been recorded. And figure one here represents the records of building collapse with respect to the height of the buildings within the last decade. Um, Three-story buildings are the most collapsed it can be seen that um, the incidence of collapse is least for high-rise buildings and large mono-volume buildings. This can be attributed to the fact that um, clients, you know, who engage in the uh, construction of this form of buildings are well exposed and well knowledgeable on the need, 
to engage um, seasoned professionals or any form of construction work related to these form of buildings. And when we talk about um, large mono volume buildings, we refer to mega single story uh, meant for um, large crowd. So figure two here shows the number of casualties associated to each group of floors. It can be seen that casualties associated with high rise buildings and large mono volume buildings far exceed those of other group of floors. You know, and this is a major, major concern. So from figure three here, we can see that um, July has the highest collapse rate. And this happens to coincide with the peak of the rainy season in Nigeria. As a result, it is critical to consider how changing climate will impact these investments over the design life of uh, the structures. So it's also important to note that um, 64% of these building collapses are associated to buildings under construction, you know, as against 36% um, of buildings which were already constructed and were already in use. So figure five here shows causes of building collapses in Nigeria. Um, prominent causes are as a result of um, the use of substandard building materials, which measure up to 20%, also structural deficiency and um, um, illegal conversions um, measure up to 18.67% and 14.62% um, respectively. Um, also, it's um, worthy to note that 29% of um, these cases um, have no causes reported and this can be attributed to the lack of data, technical data to validate um, the cause of these uh, building collapses. All right, in view of these um, causes of uh, building collapses, um, proper planning with an integrated design approach, construction and operation of the building infrastructure is very key to sustainability and resilience in building infrastructures. Um, this is also imperative as uh, climate change is expected to increase the frequency and severity of um, certain types of extreme weather conditions. Also, in developing sustainable building uh, infrastructures, the working knowledge of the state of the art relating to structural materials and systems coupled with the approximate carbon content is also essential you know, in proper utilization of locally sourced accessible materials you know, in building construction. Um, also, it is worthy to note um, many professionals, industry professionals are not fully versed in this area of interest and this uh, necessitates further training of construction professionals and probably stakeholders, you know, to strengthen the sustainable and effective planning and execution of um, building infrastructures so as to avoid the um, future collapses of uh, building structures. So in conclusion, it can be established that there are actually fewer cases of uh, high-rise building collapses in Nigeria when compared to the collapse of uh, buildings of um, lower heights. This can be attributed to the engagement of uh, more seasoned professionals in the construction of these form of buildings. Um, the fewer cases of these collapses, you know, shows that Nigeria as a nation, you know, can actually cope, you know, with the technicality and the advancement that comes with the construction of these high-rise buildings. However, the frightening scenario of casualties linked to the collapse of um, high-rise buildings raises the question of how much, you know, still needs to be done in Nigeria to fully adopt and incorporate sustainable and safe construction practices into the Nigerian construction industry processes. Bear in mind the changing environment in which we operate, you know, and also the conventional tools with which we use to plan environments are changing. An understanding of these changes is very crucial to deal with the challenge in future. Hence, developing new tools and focus you know, are required to respond to these changes are also very essential. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all.